Hello everyone. The purpose of this video is to give you an overview on how to process diversity data, in this case a data set collected from Phylosphere Biodiversity. Uh, I'm going to show you how to calculate the Shannon's Diversity Index and then perform a statistical analysis to understand whether or not the two factors in our experiment, and that is media type and the strata in which you uh, sampled this biodiversity, we're going to evaluate whether that is statistically significant. Okay, so here is your data set, and I'm assuming that you have finalized this. Um, I have the old designation for media types, and we're going to fix this in a little bit, but let's say that you've got your, just uh, to, you know, to move things along here, we're going to assume that you've got your finalized data here, and it's raw. In this case, 10 morphotypes, they're arranged like so and uh, across five trees, as you can see, and two, uh, can or two strata, the canopy on the soil, and so on. Okay, so you know that stuff. Now it's time to uh, start to calculate the Shannon's index. Now, for each of these samples, of course, the Shannon's index is the sum of the product of the proportion of times in an, uh, a particular morphotype was found times the log of uh, the, that proportion. All right, that sounds complicated, but there's actually a pretty straightforward way of processing it. The first thing you're going to have to do is figure out the proportions. That's what I recommend you do first. And it's pretty easy. You just do uh, this. This data sheet is already set up for you. You've got the number of times that each um, uh, thing was found, and then um, you've got the total number of uh, morphotypes recovered. So that's why that total column is already there. Try to have your back here. Then all you have to do is just divide by the number of times you found each particular morphotype. In this case, the first morphotype was 17% of all morphotypes found on that particular uh, media type for that particular tree. And once you have this uh, entered correctly like so, you can uh, you get this little handy feature in Excel. You can just drag the column over like this. Oh, excuse me, I made a mistake, actually. Um, excuse me, I forgot I was gonna do, um, I was gonna drag that over, but uh, of course, if I did that, I would change what I was dividing by. Um, you don't wanna do that. You wanna make sure that you're always dividing by column P, even though we're gonna change the columns for the other morphotypes. And the way that I do that is I lock it, like so. Okay, cool. So I've got that 17%, it's the same answer as it was before, and then I can drag this across all of my morphotypes, 10 of them, and take a look. And I've got some zeros here and stuff, and that looks pretty good, you know, 5% you know, of the morphotypes, so on and so forth. I've got spaces for 12, but I didn't find that many. I found 10. The other thing that I can do here is I can just drag all this stuff down and I get a full set of um, data here. So what's good is I've got zeros here where I should have zeros and then I've got the proportions uh, for everything else. If you have, um, sometimes you can end up with an error in here for some reason. Um, Sometimes uh, you might, uh, if you had no morphotypes, you'll end up with a zero in the total column. Uh, and zero divided by zero is not a good number. It's a problematic uh, thing. So what you can do here is you can change this uh, equation slightly to type what you use is this command if error, if error. Uh, and then you have the, the expression you want to evaluate. And then if it's an error, you just give it a zero. So zero divided by zero would be zero in our case, and um, that ends up being the same. It's not a problem in this particular data set, but it is in those of you that had plates where you didn't recover anything. And that if error um, equation is gonna, uh, little feature is gonna come in handy now, because uh, at this point we have the proportions, but we do not have the log of the proportions, nor do we have the product of the log of the proportions times the proportions. So that's where we're gonna actually do the most of the work in calculating the Shannons. So equals, I'm gonna uh, multiply the proportion. Actually, what I'm gonna do first, I'm gonna do the log first. And the reason that I'm gonna do that 
is because there, it's easy to have problems when you take the log of a number and get an error. And it's going to cause you a lot of heartache. So I'm going to do if error, uh, I always spell it, if error log of um, the thing that I care about, which is the PI. If it's an error, I want it to be zero. Um, but if it's not, or actually, I'm just going to take the product. I'm just going to take whatever the result is of that equation and then just multiply it by that uh, proportion. Okay, so have a look here real quick. It should get end up with a negative number if it's anything other than zero. I've got the log of R2. I've got this if error. That's going to help protect me. If error, if the log of R2 is an error, it's supposed to be zero. Um, basically, all this is doing is ensuring that I don't end up with an error in here. I'm either going to end up with some negative number or I'm going to end up with zero. And then I'm going to multiply that by the proportion. Okay? Follow that procedure and you will save yourself a lot of pain. Now, what I should end up with any time I have something that's non-zero, I should end up with a negative number. And that's um, a result of taking a log. I just copy all of these down. I don't need to lock anything. And you can see I have some zeros here. Had I taken the, you know, the log of zero is going to be an error. So if you don't have that if error thing in there, you're going to have some pro. It's going to give you an error. It's going to cause you some heartache down the road. I'm going to just copy all of these over. And that's what I've got. And then now I can get the Shannons, which remember is the sum of all of these things. So for each of these morphotypes, there's some weight. And it is a function of how many times or what proportion of morphotypes or recoveries that particular uh, morphotype had within your plate. So what I do is I sum all these up. I just sum all these up and I multiply the result by minus one. Um, that is the easiest way to look at it. And now I've got my Shannons, which is cool. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy this. I'm going to go way back over here because this is where the information is that I care about. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a copy of this. And importantly, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to paste the values. You need to do that. Um, there are various ways of managing your data. Pasting the values is going to be the best thing you're going to be able to do for yourself. And then, uh, excuse me, I'm going to get this stuff, tree, strata, and media. I need to know all of those things. And then I'm going to come down here and associate them with my calculated Shannon's index. Basically, what I've done is I've copied my data in order to clean things up. All right. Next thing I want to do is I want to fix this media um, designation. And I'm going to do it in a way that makes it easier for me to follow. And uh, so I've got the full strength MEA first, and I'm going to just say one MEA um, and uh, full for that. Okay. And we have our intermediate thing here. It's MEA, and I'm going to give that uh, 5%. And the reason I start this with, a, with the number one and uh, follow it with the number two, in fact, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to give the water auger number three. And the reason that I've done that is because it makes it easier to sort. And uh, it doesn't matter if the water auger is number one, being the lowest uh, level, um, or you know, the least amount of nutrients. Uh, you just want to be able to sort them uh, in a way that kind of has is sensible. Um, and uh, at least having the MEA as, as first, or the water auger as first, or, and, uh, or vice versa as last, it uh, makes the most sense. OK, it's going to cause I like doing this one, two, three, because it makes it a lot easier to sort. All right. So I'm going to just copy these in to all of these locations so that I have an easier to manage data set like so. All right. Now, the next thing that I need to do in order to analyze this is to get the uh, canopy data into individual columns. So I'm going to have to sort this whole data set, and whenever you sort, it's kind of an exercise that's fraught with potential error. I highlight it all. I'm going to go up here to data. I'm going to sort. I'm going to sort. Uh, oh, my data has header rows, and you need to, if you have the header rows highlighted, you need to make sure that you click on this here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to sort by strata, and then I'm going to add a level just to make sure that this works the way I want it to. I'm going to sort by tree. All right. And so here's what I get. I get the canopy ones are all on top, and the soil ones are all on the bottom. And if 
for one more time, I'm going to make a copy. The reason that I'm making so many copies is because I have a tendency, I'm going to just paste by, uh, paste by um, the data again. The reason I make so many copies is I have a tendency to, to make mistakes sometimes, and I don't want to screw up the calculus. I don't want to screw up the work I already did. I don't want to screw up the calculations. I don't want to screw up this thing that I have sorted correctly. Um, if I have some sort of error, I want to protect myself. So that's why I make copies of it. The bad news is that if you make a mistake, you're going to have to go back. But it's not that big of a deal. All right, so now I've got the data sorted as, uh, as follows. I've got tree 1 through 5 and all the canopy samples. And I've got the media sorted in, a, in a descending order. And then you'll notice that the soils data is formatted exactly the same, but it is stacked on top of the canopy data. Now I need to get it unstacked. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to take this, I'm going to cut, cut it. As long as you have things sorted correctly, you can do this. Now I've got the soil data here, and I've got the uh, canopy data here, and then I can get rid of this, get rid of this other stuff that's um, no longer needed. So I'm just going to clean up my data here. In order to do an analysis of variance using Excel, which is um, not a great way to do analysis of variance, but it is the way that I recommend you do it, you need your data sorted as follows. Um, the One of the factors, whatever factor has two levels, needs to be in um, columns, like so. And then you need your, uh, your other factor clearly designated. You can't have any typos or anything. If you do, you're, you're, not, you're gonna fail. Um, you're going to just fail in your attempt to do this. You need to have things sorted like so. It's Analysis of variance works in Excel, but it is very specific. I mean, annoyingly specific. I am not a fan, but it does work. Okay, so here's what's going to happen. I'm going to highlight the data that I want to analyze. And again, I want to know whether there are statistical differences between the two canopy strata and among the different media types. Did I get different levels of diversity depending on what media I grew this stuff out? Uh, for that matter, did I get lo different levels of diversity across the medias for these individual strata? Good news is analysis of variance can answer that. Now you need to add the analysis tool pack to your um, Excel uh, that you're working with. And what you got here is analysis, you got ANOVA, two-factor with replication. And this is a kind of generalized t-test that you can use to test two factors at once. Okay, so that's the right one. Two-factor ANOVA with replication. I'm going to hit OK. All right, and this comes up with a deceptively simple um, dialog here. It's got an input range, number of rows per sample, and then an output range. All right, so I am first going to go through and find the correct data which is what I had highlighted, but um, Excel did not guess that. Now, I want to point out something here. I highlighted not just the data, but also the column headers. And if you don't do that, you will fail. It will just fail, OK? Um, you need to tell it how many rows per sample. You have five trees. You have five replicates. That's the number of rows. Each of these samples has five rows. If in the event that for some reason you had fewer, you have to adjust for that. But I have to say this, um, this is very important. The, um, it will, I don't think this will deal with, I don't know a way to deal with uneven sample sizes. The sample sizes need to be uniform. Okay, and then next thing I'm gonna do is choose an output range and I wanna put it somewhere sensible. I'm gonna put it right next to my data, like so. There are many places, many ways that this will go wrong, but if you have your data sorted like this, arranged like this, and you have all this stuff uh, in there as, as follows, it will work. Okay, hit OK, and then I get this big table. And what it's done is it's gone through and uh, summarized the data, uh, the sum and the average the sum is not very useful um, here. And what I care about is down here, which is the hypothesis test. This is the only, Thing that we actually use this for. And in fact, what we care about is right here, this thing is F value and it's a translation into a probability. What this probability is uh, telling us is the chance that given the distribution of the data, 
that we would find this level of difference based on a random draw of the data. All right, so what does that mean in practice? It means that uh, for, uh, so this is called sample, but um, it doesn't name things correctly. Sample here is whatever is in the rows. So that's media type. And then we have columns, and we arrange columns to be strata. So that's that's what's here. Basically, you can change this and use media, and then um, strata. Okay. And this is an interaction between media and strata. I discuss that if it's um, if you like. Uh, so here's what we got. We have a p-value here that says 0.24, but a quarter of the time we would get this level of difference for media type based on a random draw of our data. Okay, that's a lot. That's actually not very good. Um, that means that about 25% of the time we would get this basically just because of random variance in our sample population. Not very uh, convincing. Now, this value is very, very small. It's uh, a fraction of a percent of the time we would get this level of difference between canopy types based on this level of, of difference. So that seems pretty convincing. It's very small p-value in this case. You can see the f-value is very big. Um, like I say, translated into this small probability value is saying that there seems to be this, the, the analysis suggests empirically supports uh, the conclusion that there is a significant difference between strata but not among media types. So the next thing that you're gonna do is you need to um, plot this, pardon me, uh, that is not supposed to look like that. It's supposed to look like this. Um, the next thing you need to do is to plot this data, and if we look at this here, what this is, say, what this is showing us is, you can see, in, uh, once you pl uh, do a bar plot with the standard deviations, you can see that the, the soil, um, the soil diversity levels seem to be consistently higher than the canopy diversity levels for this particular example data set. So in this case, we would conclude that there's pretty good evidence that um, the, canopy, the, the uh, leaf phylosphere diversity is higher in the soil than in the canopy for this particular sample. 